dear friends in the last class we discussed about the history of photosynthesis research we stopped where the modern research utilizing photoradiography and tracer technique started in 1940s today we are going to see the photosynthetic apparatus we know it is the chloroplast and we are aware of the diversity of chloroplast from lower unicellular alga to higher plants and geosperms and the unity of this structure from the microorganism to the highly diverse orchidaceae so the basic discussion about a life mechanism a mechanism inside the cell so understanding these aspects will lead us to the appreciation of the property of life so let us concentrate on the photosynthetic apparatus as you know the photosynthesis is nothing but the reduction of carbon dioxide and oxidation of water resulting in the formation of glucose and the release of oxygen from water the equation is co2 plus h2o gives c6 h12o6 plus o2 so the energy in light is converted into chemical energy in the carbohydrates or the glucose molecule what are the apparatus required for this conversion that is a question so the basic unit of photosynthesis is nothing but the chloroplast the chloroplast is a membrane bound organelle present inside the cell the outer covering of the chloroplast is a double membrane there is an outer membrane and an inner membrane in between these membranes there is a space known as the periplastidian space inside the chloroplast there are some membrane bound structures known as grana and there is a matrix known as the stroma the grana are made up of membranous structures known as thylakoids these thylakoids are arranged in the shape of a pile of coins is the term we use to express the structure but these pile of coins are interconnected the thylakoid present in these pile of coins are known as the grana thylakoids and the interconnections are also made up of thylakoids and they are called as stroma thylakoids inside the grana there is a lumen there is a space and outside the grana there is the stroma stroma is also and abundant in enzymes proteins metal ions etc the basic function the basic process in photosynthesis is the trapping or fixing of light energy and also the fixing of carbon so the next component is the light the chloroplast is designed in such a way that the light energy is trapped maximum and utilized for the photosynthetic process so the next component is the light and the ultimate process is carried out by the pigments present inside the grana with respect to the light we are not going to details because we know the basics only the visible spectrum and some infrared region is absorbed by the plants for example in the case of rhodophyceae which grow in the deep water the algae can absorb far red light so only the visible spectrum the wavelength from around 300 nanometer to 700 nanometer is utilized for the photosynthetic process with the combinations of different pigments the diverse plants are able to absorb the maximum available light so we will see how these pigment molecules are organized inside the chloroplast and absorb light energy and transfer it to the reaction center so the key role is played by the pigments what are the pigments present in the chloroplast the pigments can be broadly classified into water soluble pigments and organic solvent soluble pigments it is clear that the water soluble pigments are polar compounds and the important three among them are the phycocyanin 
ഫൈക്കോ എർത്തൻ ആൻഡ് ആൽഡോ ഫൈക്കോ സയാൻ ദ ആർ ടുഗർ ഓൾ ടുഗദർ ദ ആർ കോൾഡ് ആസ് ഫൈക്കോ ബിലിൻസ് കെമിക്കലി ഫൈക്കോ ബിലിൻസ് ആർ ദി ക്രൊമാറ്റോഫോർ മോയിറ്റി ഓഫ് ദി ദി ബില്ലി പ്രോട്ടീൻ ദ ആർ പ്രോട്ടീൻ ലിക് ഡിപ്പെൻസ് ആൻഡ് ആർ ഹീറ്റ് സെൻസിറ്റീവ് the phycobilins are also like chlorophyll molecules but they lack the phytotail and the magnesium ion in the tetrapyrrole ring there are three phycobilins commonly present they are phycocyanin phycoerythrin and allo phycocyanin phycocyanin is present in blue green algae phycoerythrin is present in pheophyceae rhodophyceae and blue green algae and allo phycocyanin is present in blue green algae and red algae and the organic solvent soluble pigments are different types of chlorophyll all the chlorophylls have a common structure common basic structure and there are eight different types of chlorophyll molecules based on the site chains on the basic skeleton if we take chlorophyll a molecule as the basic structure or the starting point it is c55 h72 o5 n4 mg the structure is like a spatula where the head is formed of a tetrapyrrol ring in which a magnesium atom is present and a long phytoid tail the head is made up of tetrapyrrol rings and one isopentyl carbon ring arranged in cyclic form non ionic magnesium atom is formed in the center of the ring two molecules of the pyrrol rings are linked to the magnesium with two covalent bonds and the rest two molecules are linked with the coordinate bonds these tetrapyrroles linked together by a methane group forming a ring system in addition to the four pyrrol rings a fifth isocyclic ring is also present which only contains carbon atoms this porphyrin skeleton bears an alcohol component with the 20 carbon atoms the phytol tail the phytol tail is bounded to the seventh carbon of the porphyrin head phytol tail is hydrophobic and contains one double bond the chlorophyll molecule looks like a spatula there are eight different types of chlorophylls they are chlorophyll a chlorophyll b chlorophyll c chlorophyll d chlorophyll e bacteria chlorophyll a bacteria chlorophyll b chlorobium chlorophyll 650 and chlorobium chlorophyll 660 the basic structure of the chlorophyll are the same as mentioned but they differ in the chain attached to the pyrrole ring here you can see the structure of chlorophyll a molecule b molecule c molecule and d molecule they are different in their structure and the most important thing is that they differ in the the absorption spectrum where the regions of the visible spectrum get absorbed by these pigments so a diverse combination of these pigments help the plant to adapt to the environment with respect to the availability of light that is the most important thing chlorophyll a is present in almost all plants and its molecular formula is c6 c55 h72 o5 n4 mg in the case of chlorophyll b which is present in the higher plants and also in the case of green algae the molecular formula is c55 h70 o6 n4 mg we can remember this structural difference here you can see a ch3 group here so ch3 contains two hydrogen atoms instead of that the chlorophyll molecule contains a ch o group so two hydrogen atoms are less in chlorophyll b but one oxygen group is added so its structure its formula changes to c c55 h70 o6 n4 mg with this change the absorption spectrum varies very much in chlorophyll b similarly all other chlorophylls for example the chlorophyll c is present in brown algae chlorophyll d is present in the 
red algae chlorophyll e is present in salvophyce in photosynthetic bacteria bacteria chlorophyll a and b and chlorobium chlorophylls are formed in addition to these chlorophylls there are carotenoids and xanthophyll carotenoids are pigments which contain carbon and hydrogen only there are alpha and beta carotenes they are unsaturated hydrocarbons made up of carbon and hydrogen only different carotenes differ only in the arrangement of their molecules in space the structure of beta carotin is given here but the xanthophylls xanthophylls are oxygenated or oxygen containing derivatives of the carotene the common xanthophylls are lutein zeaxanthin neoxanthin violaxanthin etc the chlorof the xanthophylls are yellow in color and they are distributed more than carotenes in nature in a normal leaf the ratio between carotene and xanthophyll are what is to do on an average what is the function of these carotenoids and xanthophylls they protect the chlorophyll from photo oxidation because ultraviolet rays and energy rich rays can oxidize the chloroplast components chloroplast proteins including the chlorophyll molecules best example is the epoxide cycle or it is also known as photo oxidation or solarization It is a phenomenon of oxidation of cellular components, including chlorophyll molecules, in high intensity of light. During the process of photosynthesis, chlorophyll molecules get excited and combine with the molecular oxygen to form chlorophyll oxygen complex, which leads to the inactivation of chlorophyll molecules, followed by the destruction. Generally, the activated chlorophyll molecules return to their original state due to fluorescence, phosphorescence. and its participation in photosynthesis this photo oxidation is prevented by the shield pigment such as carotenoids the carotenes themselves undergo photo oxidation carotenoids bind to chlorophyll oxygen complex and form epoxide derivative releasing chlorophyll molecules the non epoxy carotenoid gets oxidized non epoxy carotenoid can be regenerated from its epoxy derivative through dark reaction catalyzed by the enzyme carotenoid deepoxidase when we say about this this is the photo oxidation of the chloroplast proteins including chlorophyll do not confuse it with the photo respiration there the photo oxidation of calvin cycle intermediate takes place now we can see how the chlorophyll molecules are synthesized the chlorophyll molecule synthesis takes place with a krebs cycle intermediate the succinyl coenzyme a the succinyl coenzyme a condenses with a molecule of glycine to form alpha amino beta keto adipic acid this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme ala synthetase now the alpha amino beta keto adipic acid goes into decarboxylation reaction in presence of cofactor pyridoxal phosphate light and enzyme amino lubulinic acid synthetase to form amino lubulinic acid dehydration of the latter forms two molecules of amino lubulinic acid in the next step the two molecules of amino lubulinic acid get condensed to form a molecule of monopyrrole compound porphobilinogen or the pbg The reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme ALA dehydrase. Now, four molecules of PBG, which is a monopyrrole, get condensed to form a tetrapyrrole compound, uropyrrhenogen, with evolution of four molecules of ammonia. The process is enzyme mediated, and uropyrrhenogen goes into decarboxylation reaction to form copyrrhenogen. the oxidative decarboxylation of the coporphyrinogen under anaerobic condition in presence of enzyme protoporphyrinogen this reaction is light light dependent and protoporphyrinogen get oxidized and yield protoporphyrin protoporphyrin incorporates with magnesium atom to form magnesium mg protoporphyrin and it condenses with ch3 group to form mg protoporphyrin monomethyl ester this ch3 is donated by 
S adenosyl methionine. Further reduction of this group into CH3, CH2 yields protochlorophyllite. So we can say that chloro this protochlorophyllite is the precursor of chlorophyll molecule. In the next step, this tetrapyrrole get attached to the phytol tail. Phytol tail is a alcohol containing tail of 20 carbon atoms. And the latest view is that the protochlorophyllite gets converted into chlorophyllite by photoreduction. The chlorophyllite A is assumed as the immediate precursor of chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B is formed from the chlorophyll A. In some bryophytes and gymnosperms, there are some pathways for the production of chlorophyll in the complete darkness. So shade living plants are, which are green have this capacity. Whereas most of the higher plants, light loving plants, uh, the chlorophyll synthesis takes place only in the presence of light. Now, there are differences uh, in such plants where chlorophyll synthesis takes place in darkness. We are not going to that much detail, but understand that there, is, there are different pathways for the chlorophyll synthesis and this is one of them. Inside the chloroplast, these chlorophyll molecules are arranged in different ways. Chlorophyll molecules along with other pigments. As you know, there are two photosystems, photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. We will go to the details of such things. But now we can say that these chlorophyll molecules are in the form of quantosomes as proposed by Park and Beggins. They propose the term quantosome. It is a concept, it is a theoretical expression of the basic unit of photosynthesis. What is a quantosome? We cannot take it out to show that this is a quantosome, but it is assumed that the quantosomes are the basic unit of photosynthesis where uh, the photon is trapped and contains around 200 molecules of chlorophyll. So now we are thorough with the, the different pigments present in the chloroplast and we know that they are capable of absorbing different wavelength of light. But the most important pigment is the chlorophyll A pigment which is required for the initiation of light reaction. Now we are going to uh, see some other apparatus present inside the chloroplast. After explaining all those things, we will go to the light. Uh,